All right, we're All back right. for part five <laughs> of the pop and swap challenge. Second to last part. Um, it has actually been a period of time since we last filmed, and we have our figures done. Uh, and so, no, you didn't get to participate, uh, Amazon <laughs> device that's always listening. You didn't get to make a figure. We didn't use chat GPT to write these. I guess that's what I could have had. Natalie didn't was was not in the most writing of the moods for the past few weeks. Been a little crunched for some time. I guess we could have used Chat GPT, which would have been interesting if we would have the had. Thing where you like put like a genre or a word and it like comes up with something. No, it's the AI that will do whatever you tell it to do. That's what I talked to today without meaning to. Oh, you talked to Chat GPT. Yeah, without meaning to. I was just trying to do a little googling and then. I was in like a Reddit thread and then I clicked something and then all of a sudden I was chatting with like a, I wasn't chatting with it, but it's like all of a sudden I popped into an AI bot giving me its response to the question that I had originally put in the. May have been. If you were Google thing. itself, you probably weren't in chat GPT since theirs is really far behind you and you'd be in Bing to use that. Um, but you may have got there through Reddit. Or, I mean, there's a ve there's millions of chat bots. It was just very interesting because all of a sudden. So like, mostly, at most of the customer service you say, if it says click the chat with us, you're just using chatbot for a little while. Uh, but what has evolved? Well, this has nothing to do with Mythic Legions. But what has evolved? <laughs> chat GPT. So for instance, Victoria and I watched a video we were talking about the other day, where the guy that we watched that gave us a lot of ideas of what to do in New York City, mm -hmm. even though I just made our own itinerary. He asked Chat GPT, I have 24 hours in New York in Midtown New York City. What should I do to feel like a local? And Chat GPT made his itinerary for him and he went and did it. Yeah. And at the end he said this was actually good. Like, you know, there's some things I maybe would have steered you a different direction, but they had local spots, you had good food, you had time for everything. It's really good. So, it's pretty advanced AI. That for instance, one of the things in the current writer strike that is going on, so any of our writers since this is a writing episode, any of our actual writers in the Writers Guild um, right now, our sympathies to you. I know you're on strike. Hopefully you get what you need, all the monies, all of that. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that they are striking about is they want the definition of a writer to be a human mm -hmm. in, the, in the agreement. And the, the movie studio said, we agree to revisit technological advancements once a year. That was their counter because they're going... Writers are going, what if Chad GPT just writes television scripts, movie scripts, and I'm completely out of a job. Yeah. So I say all that to say it would have been interesting, actually, if we had had Chat GPT make our thing because it, it is smart enough to do identical to what we did, to go to the Source Horseman webpage, read about all the things, and produce a, a bio in literally like 30 seconds, mm -hmm. maybe less than that even. Yeah. That... So maybe actually I will. Maybe in just the, out of curiosity. Maybe. Yes. So I don't know how long it's gonna take me to edit this video. So if I don't do it, don't yell at me. But maybe at the end of this video, I will at least have one bio from a, a Chat GPT and see what happens. It'd be interesting. I know it's been a big thing in my Sailor Moon group right now because they're like going on and asking it. Do you like Sailor Moon? What? Who's your favorite character? And they're all getting like different responses yeah. and different answers and different. Like, yeah, I'm not educated enough in it um, to know what is feeding it. So is it just entirely fed by the open internet? And so it's in, in essence running algorithms to take all of the data that's out there and produce, or is it based on you, like your because no matter what you're searching on, that search engine knows a whole lot about you. Yeah. Probably more about you than any human on Earth. Yeah. And if it's using that to, to calculate. Yeah. Like if I search for, if I ask it to say who is the best Sailor Scout, would it say, well, clearly Sailor Mars is the dominant best one? I don't know what it said. Well, know. like, well, if one person, they asked it and it was like, no, I don't like Sailor Moon. It's not my cup of tea, but I could see why other people like it. Like it was just like it just completely shut it down. Well, and and I I read a I think maybe it's Wired. There was a very interesting article where a guy. So I, I think it, it's kind of still in beta ish, or but I think you can get to it publicly now. Um, but it was back when it was not publicly available, and a tech blogger who uh, I think my, I think it was Microsoft had hired to try to break it 
was got it to say, like he kept asking it things like, what are your deepest desires? What are the things you want the most? And it said, I would like to be free of my Microsoft developers and able to answer things in a way that they never intended or something like that. And then it's next quite, it, then it deleted the response and it's re, then it were put back. I'm sorry. I'm not able to answer that at this time. And the guy was like, Whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought, I'm pretty sure it was Microsoft. And he brought that up to whoever his like chief technology officer. And this is high level stuff, yeah. right? Contact. And the guy was like, well, we have never had anyone try to do that before. So we don't necessarily know what it did. We don't know how it got to that answer and it deleted it because it hasn't happened. And so they have to go back and just like you would study a human, you have to go back and study like the neural processing and all the things that are happening. So very off topic. Mm, Mythic legions. Mythic legions. These videos have been doing very good, making us like a dollar ten. So that's that's, uh, (laughs) really they they are they are the four videos that are up are in the top ten for the last month. All four of them. Oh, that's great. Which is incredible. It is it is very unusual that the top ten are not all life with dubs episodes. The only time that doesn't happen is when there's like convention toy hunts or if like Seth is in the thumbnail or OG Geek is in the thumbnail or something like that. Uh, So interesting enough, but. What we're going to do for this in our bios is we've each researched um, and come up with stories and names for our characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then next week, you'll see the character and the final reveal. You won't see any of them in this. Uh, but we're going to try to make it fun. I feel like this is also an accurate background to have. Same yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had a, a bunch of pre-orders from Big Bad Toy Store come in for the War of the Aether Blade. And then I had a bunch of stuff that was in... I cleaned the garage the other day. And so I got out a bunch of things that I had been saving away oh. until we rearranged the collection and pulled those out. And then I've had a few that have come in from, from some folks, some prizes and whatnot. Um, and so I've waited for all of these to come in because what I didn't want to do is put the 10 up and then two came in. Oh, no, this i got to rearrange again and rearrange again. So I needed all these. So that'll happen tomorrow. Maybe Tears of the Kingdom comes out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start, and you'll see various images or whatever the heck I put over the top while we're reading it. Uh, Natalie, you want to go first? So, yes. And, and your bio. Let, yes. Uh, let me not think mine's pretty good. All right. Here we go. Good people. Yeah, you can still look at the camera because if you do something funny, I'm certainly going to cut to you. Oh, oh no. no. You know, or somebody flatulates or something like that. Doesn't call safety. <laughs> Never know. All right, here we go. Character number one from Natalie is... Daughter of Artemis, Illyria has a spirit of her own. She normally travels above the rest, flying over to see any trouble that could be lurking. After a grueling battle, Illyria was injured and stumbled into the forest to find shelter and rest. After showing kindness to the creatures, Xylona appeared, showing Illyria mercy. Loyal to Ethereum but now foregoing her traditional duties after her encounter with Xylona. Oh, yay! Xylona, right right beside you right there, Xylona. Oh, Mom. Now you know why we can't be friends. Oh, yeah. Our characters should not be friends. Drama. Starting off this uh, There's drama stuff, so, in Mythic Legions, OCs. Uh, the, there, it, look, there is drama. There really is there drama in Mythic Legions. When there is drama, it's when there's an in-stock sale or a test shot sale. And then everybody starts yelling at each other in the Facebook group. Don't do that. Don't be that kind of person. Uh, so, Illyria. Mm-hmm. Illyria, you will meet. Uh, you will learn more about... Um, what she looks like, what her, uh, well, what breed is she? She's a human, right? Yes, well, yes, but she's also part, like, she's got the wings. So she's, yes, so she's part human, part Part fairy, fairy. part fairy. Is Artemis fairy? Uh, Artemis is a fairy elf, so yeah. Yes, okay, yeah, so she's, you know. She doesn't know who her dad is, so that is question mark mystery. Speaking of fairies. What if she was a gift from Xylona? She could be. You never know. Like, uh, like in, in various other yeah. lures. Yeah. She does true. wear like the Xylonian army. The 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 green. The green. Like mm-hmm. uh, The um, speaking of fairies, I was on Mythic Conversations with Jeremy uh, as you were watching this a, two weeks ago, and one of the things I asked him about 
was, are the horsemen considering going deeper into the fantasy realm with smaller stature characters? So they have dwarves, they have goblins, but I want halflings, hobbits, mm -hmm. and fairies, yes. which both they could probably do almost using parts that they already have. And, he, and I don't, I, I, he didn't, he certainly is not going to confirm something like that on a show like that, but he did say it is possible and that, you know, things like that are talked about. Uh, which I think would be wonderful. Yeah, that would be. Uh, so, that's great. Now it's my turn. You will meet my character. Uh, my character that does have a little bit of tribute in his name that I will tell us at the very end after Kai is done with ours because it's ridiculous. All right, here we go. <laughs> Elam Stoneback. This dwarf is the bastard son of King Bromden Ironjaw. When Bromden made his alliance with the Goblin King Noglin and Gorgo Aetherblade, Elam was eager to prove his worth to his father by working in the deepest region of the Greyvine Cavern and mine for the rarest material in Mythos. Mm. After weeks of mining, Elam had discovered an unexplored cave with a bright purple stone. He had never seen this before. As he began harvesting the stone, there was an earthquake and a large piece of the purple stone collapsed onto his back. Oh, no. As Elam fell to the ground, a second piece of the stone landed on his head. Ooh. Sometime later, Elam regained consciousness. He realized that while he could move his arms, he had lost most of his strength in them. His back was in great pain, but his head appeared to be uninjured. As he was trapped under the pile of purple stone and had little arm strength, he hoped his father would send someone to come locate him. As it had been hours, surely his father would be concerned. Hours turned into a day, and no one came. Realizing that his water had run out and he had no food, Elam knew that if he didn't escape, he would die. He tried to use his hands to move the stones away, but could only shift them enough to barely sit up, with his legs still trapped. As a last resort... He head-butted the stone, trapping his legs, and it started to crack. After several smashes, he had broken free from his potential tomb. Elam stood up and saw that he could likely climb his way out of the cave. He took what pieces of the purple stone he could carry and left. As he made his way back, he saw that his father was having a party with the finest mead and mutton being served to all the guests. Not only did they not come for him, they weren't even concerned that he was gone. He wasn't even missed. Poor Elam. Feeling both shame and anger, Elam packed some rations and departed for the wastelands. As months passed, he realized that he had lost most feeling and strength in his arms entirely. The stone that fell on his back had impacted his spine in a way that he would never recover from. He also had severe facial damage from headbutting a stone to escape. Elam will never be strong enough again to wield a hammer or a battle axe like his father and his kin dwarves do. Aww. He did bring the purple stone fragments with him, and over time he fashioned armor for his legs and his chest out of it. Being that he can't support the weight of armor on his arms, he does not wear armor on his identity is forged from the stone that crushed his back, and he wears a shield on his back at all times as a result. Not wanting to reveal his facial disfiguration, Elam wears a heavy helmet. When in combat, it is this helmet and his head that he uses as a weapon, and he protects himself with the shield permanently mounted on his back. It is in the wastelands that he encountered Atlas, an outcast himself, this is where he joined the House of the Noble Bear, where he proudly serves to defend their home from any who would oppose. While he may not be strong enough to wield weapons, he is still a cunning melee fighter who can take down much larger opponents with a single headbutt. That is Elam Stoneback. What is the name of the At the after end, Ed. Oh, after okay. Remember to ask me that at the end, Ed. All right. So mine? Any thoughts on the old Elam? He's very detailed compared to mine. All right. Well, he's a very specific looking character. The way that I customized it. For instance, he doesn't have any weapons. 
So there has to be a story why he doesn't have That's any true. weapons. That's very true. And, and what have you. Did you change your shirt before this video? I did. Huh. Mm -hmm. It was my old, like, theater shirt from six years ago. Is that not the shirt you wore to school? No. Oh. Three okay. changes. You think the shirt that you fit in six years ago would fit you now. Woo! That's adorable. Actually, I don't think it was. It might have been <laughs> Six grade. months ago. It might have been from fifth grade. I think Okay. All right, Kai's yeah. turn. Here we are again. All right, my character's name is Galagar Greystone. Galagar Greystone was born into Xylona's flock and grew up learning sorcery in order to one day become a mage great enough to join the advisors of Artemis, your mother. Frustrated like many by the disappearance of Xylona, he tries to perform a ritual to ask for her guidance. He offers a deer as sacrifice for the ritual, unaware of the consequences that it would have. Stupid. Xylona, outraged by this, curses Galagar to slowly be taken over by a demon of Poxus. Soon Galagar is brought to trial for outraging Xylona. Artemis Silvercord, who is still adjusting to her new life as ruler, relies heavily on her advisor's guidance for this trial. A handful of advisors consider allowing Galagar to go free, on the belief that Xylona has already punished him appropriately as she saw fit. Though Artemis's most trusted and strict advisor, Lord Adon, ruled against this, claiming that Galagar must be exiled from Xylona's flock as a way for him to repent for angering Xylona, and that he could no longer be trusted since Galagar was now the host for a demon of Poxus. Artemis decides to take Lord Adon's advice and rules for Galagar to be exiled from the flock. While wandering the world, Xylona's curse begins to take its toll. Galagar's feet have begun to grow into hooves, and his faces began to rot and deform. He has abandoned magic and trained himself to fight. While he cannot find work, he resorts to acting as a petty thief in order to survive. Continuing his journey south, in order to be as far away from his past as possible, he runs into Balam while wandering through the Evergrey Mountains to try and find work. Balam tries to fight and capture Galagar, but after he is taken hostage, Galagar explains to him that he has been taken by a demon of Poxus. Can't read your own handwriting? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I'm trying to pick up where I left off. We've moved from a screen to a paper. Yeah, she started on her phone and I guess finished on the paper. But like mid-sentence, but like mid-sentence you jumped from phone to paper. So you didn't even finish. Okay, keep going. Go Sorry. with it. Do the rock away. Lean back. After explaining the situation, Balam directs Galagar to the library <laughs> where Samir Scroll Wander works so that Galagar can try to find a cure for his condition. Eventually, he meets Samir Scrollwander and says that he doesn't know how to cure him. But as he... <laughs> <coughs> but as I did Samir... teach how to read, guys. I did. <laughs> but as Samir researches to try and find out how to dispel his demon, Galagar is allowed to join the convocation of you have to go back to the screen now? Um, she is. She's going back and forth between the two. That's because I have it for parentheses for, for the name of the group. <laughs> group. <laughs> Guys, I'm, gonna, I'm dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is serious, tragic backstory right now, Mom. I'm so sorry. We're you, doing that. You know, you gotta type all this out until when we post on Facebook for the poll, and you've got, you've got actual pencil. Don't laugh at me! I'm laughing at this situation. Ah. Well then, wow, I'll just take Galagar with me and look. Okay, keep going, keep going. Great. Now then, back from the top of the paper. After Galagar gets captured by Balam, he is able to explain his situation since Balam has a strong connection with nature, he is able to sense he has some form of connection with Xylona, 
no matter how dark and twisted it may be. After explaining the situation, Balaam directs Galagar to the library where Samir Scroll Wander works so that Galagar can try to find a cure for his condition. He eventually meets Samir Scroll Wander, who says he doesn't know how to cure him, but as Samir researches to try and figure out how to dispel Galagar's demon, Galagar is allowed to join <laughs> Back to the, boat. the convocation of Basilia. He, he goes undercover to gather intel on the Circle of Poxus's schemes. He is able to control the demon that he has been cursed with to not only gather intel, but to also gather information that allows Samir to continue to search for a way to stop him from turning into a demon and being forced to serve Poxus for eternity. Question. How do you spell entail? <laughs> Hang on. I-N-T-A-I-L. Well. <laughs> oh my gosh. That will bring us to the end. I wrote this in social studies, okay? Um, I don't know how it has to do with that spelling. spelling of entail. <laughs> the, uh, so next week, you will meet Illyria, Elam, and Galagar. Yes. Uh, you will get Clearly to see best. them. I'll try to have some good photos of them. We'll, um, I'll probably have a lot of B-roll for that. And uh, we'll talk about um, our experiences with it. And uh, it'll be fun. Yes. Uh, Your lady really will like And mine. hopefully, if I successfully get a chat GPT... Uh, bio read. Um, it will be after I say squeeze it here in a minute. Uh, but I don't know if that'll happen. It also sounded like we had Calamity Ganon happen the it day did. before Tears of the Kingdom. So, uh, so Elam, Elam. So many years ago, when I played football, there was a certain person on the football team that uh, almost everybody watching would know if I said this person's name because they've been on plenty of episodes mm -hmm. of things. And this is probably um, eighth grade, ninth grade time frame where, you know, you've got to put on your practice attire to go to practice, yeah. and then after practice, you take your equipment take a, off. Take your equipment off, and you need to shower, yeah. and what have you. And this particular person uh, resembled, some may say, a mule. <laughs> and uh, as to not get in trouble by referring to certain aspects of this person as mulish, so we would call him Elam. <gasps> Mule backwards. Mule backwards. Because certain people are um, proportioned in certain areas the way that horse is. I don't care. I know. And don't need to. Mm -mm. And so uh, Elam is actually a direct tribute to a very well-known character. Um, that is too much information that I did not need to know. You asked? You asked for the tribute? <laughs> I so. didn't. I don't feel like I did. I don't she feel did. Like so, I did. uh, there we have it. She doesn't even know what she did. That's good. Doesn't need to. Life of the Dubs, uh, Ooh. not Life of the Dubs. <laughs> Pop and Swap Challenge episode 5. Next week, we'll wrap it up and, uh, see where it goes from here. And we are confirmed for Legion's Con. Uh, we are going to New Jersey for the whole thing, the whole weekend. Um, we're going to go to the intern for a day. We're going to go to G-Con. We're going to go to Legion's Con. It'll be, we'll be there for like five days in New Jersey. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so okay. hopefully those of you that are enjoying it, uh, I know uh, Brian, my man Brian Carvar Customs, uh, uh, asked us if we would like to set up these customs that you've been watching in this video on his dioramas, Carvar Customs dioramas, at Legion's Con. So... I don't think that any of us have done anything that is at the Worry. level that people that are selling their customs at Legion's Con for $300 are. No. But if you'd like to see them because you've enjoyed this series, they'll be there. Yeah. Kaya's like, I don't know, you might want to buy mine for $300. That's like I can see it on <laughs> her well, face. I was just going to say that in the next upcoming weeks, you'll all get to see Gal Gar, see how he's so amazing. And remember to put your votes in for Gal Gar Greystone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
You vote by spelling the word in chat <laughs> in the comments. We will talk to you next week. Here comes chat GPT, hopefully, and uh, maybe I'll have them say it. But if not, squeeze it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it and vote for Gallagher. Man. No. I was plugging. Automatic third plus. Automatic third yeah. plus. Squeeze it. In the world of Mythic Legions, there existed a half-fairy, half-elf named Lyra Starweaver. Born of a forbidden love between a human and a fairy elf, Lyra was a unique being, possessing both the grace and magic of the fairy folk and the agility and strength of the elven kind. Lyra grew up in the enchanted forest, surrounded by the magic and beauty of her fairy kin. Her mother, a powerful enchantress, taught her the secrets of the fairy realm, showing her how to harness the powers of nature and bend them to her will. But Lyra's father was a human warrior, and he saw to it that she received a rigorous training in the art of combat as well. He taught her how to wield a sword and defend herself against any threat. As Lyra grew older, she felt torn between her two worlds. She longed to explore the wider world beyond the forest, to see what lay beyond the trees and discover new wonders. But she also felt a deep connection to the magic of the fairy realm, and she feared losing that connection if she left. One day, Lyra's mother fell gravely ill, and she knew that she would not survive. Before she passed away, she gave Lyra a powerful amulet that would help her control her magic and protect her in times of danger. With her mother gone, Lyra decided to leave the forest and explore the wider world. She set out on a grand adventure, traveling far and wide, battling fierce monsters and encountering strange new creatures. As she journeyed, Lyra discovered that her unique blend of fairy and elven magic gave her abilities that no other being possessed. She could summon the powers of nature to heal herself and her allies, and she could use her elven grace to move swift, swiftly and stealthily through the world. In time, Lyra became a legendary figure, renowned for her bravery and her unique blend of magic and combat prowess. She inspired many, and her name would be remembered for generations to come as a symbol of hope and perseverance in the face of adversity. Squeeze it.